I said it last time I was on it. Do I think I can run 147? Yeah, definitely. Well, why are you laughing for? What, Chris, why are you laughing for? Why are you laughing for? I'm being serious. I'm being serious. I'm talking facts here. Yeah. I don't do if, buts and maybes. I do absolute... If, ands and buts, really, isn't it, to be honest? What I'm trying to say, he's the best football player he's in the world. He's quality. He's boss. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the pressure's on. The pressure's on. OK. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm, I'm in the lane eight, so at least you've had to get a good view. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's what it is. 800, yeah. so I don't really know what to expect. I'm just going to run as fast as I can yeah. for two or minutes yeah. or less. Yeah. Evening. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you doing? Yeah, all good, all good. What for Diamond League? 800. Uh, this little puppy, lane 8. That's my beauty for the uh, for the day. And uh, yeah, should be good. I'm in the sea race, which shows you the depth, you know. Even though I'm not an 800 runner, I'm still alright at it. Um, yeah, you know, some really good people in my heat, so it's going to be interesting. Just going to use it for what it is, which is training exercise, get prepared for 1500 at British Champs next week. You know, try and get a PB, which I think I can do, and uh, yeah, yeah, just just race well. You know, British Champs is not going to be a fast race from the gun where you get into a rhythm of running, say, 58 second laps. It's going to be, you know, a little bit slower, more tactical, and then when it goes, it really goes. So this is going to be, you know, high lactic, as high as you can get, really sharp stimulus just before we get ready and kind of in that last window to get some adaptations. I've got, you know, seven days until that race. So um, that being said, still an important race, you know, going to try and compete, going to try and win um, and use it for a good run out and, you know, really make sure that I'm attacking that kind of middle third between when 400 and, and is gone and you know you've got 200 to go that 4 600 is going to be where I'm going to go for it so yeah it's um it's going to be hard but you know I've got to take the challenge ready for it and uh yeah I've got 10 minutes so better get down and get ready sweet all right see you on the other side then. <laughs> All the athletes have been around about the 2 set to 12 mark. So uh, they have to actually the bus going on paper. Two set. So the pacemaker's job is to, that's where they're just hitting. <laughs> Look, KG. I, I felt great, and then I should have gone earlier there, and I left it, and then yeah. there was a little gap I should have tried to squeeze through. But. So start list for the women's sea race. Please. Top three. Let me just look who's in the race on set. Is it people? Oh, okay, you ready? Ollie Dustin, one. Comeback trail. Langford, two. Alex Bottrell, three. Stonia, four. Get ready. Results. <laughs> For the main part, 
Van der Hoofdek Reardon coming through, Archie Davis. And it looks like Matt Stoney has come from uh, the depths of nowhere to challenge, 147.48. It looks like the uh, breezy conditions... Oh, I know, tell us about it. It's oh. got yours mate, I Sorry, the field's bigger than I thought. I'll just go around the little one for a bit. Ten seconds. Then I can kind of start the shit. How was the uh, post-race workout? Yeah, decent workout. I uh, had a 10 minute jog, 10 minute light tempo, like 5.30 mile. And then uh, we were supposed to have five 200s, but as you might have been able to see out there, there's literally like nowhere flat. So uh, I did five times 20 seconds on like the only bit of concrete that's available. But uh, yeah, a few people asked previously like why I do that thing. I get a lot of messages on Strava about it, not messages, comments. And um, at this stage in the season for me, when you're building up to something, um, kind of more important than the race day. It's good to use the race day as like a hard workout stimulus. So if you think about in a week, normally I'd have two or three workouts. In a race week, I'm only going to have one plus the race. So it's important to try and make that race day more of a stimulus as well. Um, so with it only being a short 800, that's kind of like the first rep, if you will, or be a hard one. Um, so yeah, just getting a little bit of extra volume at pace afterwards. Um, which yeah, it's good to, it's annoying. Like I, I have to kind of get motivated to do it, but if you run well, I always find the workout easier because you're kind of motivated and ready to go. So yeah, decent one. And if you look out there, like most people are doing it, it's like quite a normal thing. It's not like a, oh, I'm special. I'll do a workout after a race. So yeah, pretty normal thing. Nice. How was the, uh, how was the race itself? Yeah, the race was good. Around 149.8. Yeah, 87. Yeah, 149.8. Um, so I wanted to get under 150 was like the, the C goal, basically like the lowest goal, get a PB. I think my PB was like 150.3 or 150.6 or something from last year. It's only my third ever 800 and the first one that's not a championship. So um, yeah, I mean, the kind of, the, there's two like, there's two ways to describe the race. One of them would be like, oh, it's really windy. Uh, it's a, like a great effort. I've come second, I've battled well, um, like got some good racing experience, which I needed because this year I've not really raced. You know, it's my first podium finish of the year compared to last year where almost every race I was in the top three. Um, and I've run pretty well, only to get beaten by, you know, a 334, 1500 guy, Osama. So that's pretty good. The other answer to it, which is kind of the more negative side of things, is like, I'm not very good at 800. I could do with some more practice, which is kind of completely normal, I think. There's moments in the race where the 800 is so different to a 1500 or a 5k, which are my events, where you have to be a bit more decisive with a move or you have to kind of commit to something a little bit more. You've got less time to kind of relax into a rhythm, assess the picture ahead of you. It's kind of very like now or never kind of movements. So no doubt if I ran that race two or three more times, I definitely think I can get down a few seconds. Uh, plus in better conditions, I definitely think I can, you know, like I've been running 152 at the end of a workout. So do I think I can run 147? Yeah, definitely. But I ran 149, so if ands and buts really, isn't it, to be honest. So yeah, not disappointed at all. The 800 served its purpose. I got a PB, I raced well, I ran well in good conditions. Um, in the faster races, kind of in the A race and the B race, guys that have run 145 this year have run 147, so they've run a bit slower, so that kind of shows you what it was like. Um, but no, I'm really pleased. I, you know, didn't enjoy the race as such, like in the, at the time didn't enjoy it, but I was super relaxed in the build up to it, like no nerves, kind of ready to go, just a little bit of like joking around about, oh, how's this going to go? It's 800. And then afterwards, kind of, I do feel like I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish, which was to get out and run hard. So um, yeah, that that last lap racing experience is exactly what I'm going to need to try and get out of the heats next week in the 1500 of British Champs so I don't think there's a better way to kind of simulate it than to jump into a race so yeah super pleased with that. And how do you feel going into British Champs? I'm not sure of the exact plan but I presume I'll have a long run tomorrow and Sunday and then I'll probably just have one workout on Tuesday which will probably be a bit of a lighter workout I would imagine and then easy you know up until Saturday when it's the heats. Um, as far as I'm aware, see, last year they published the heats the night before, so you knew who you were going to be, you know, when you were going to be racing, what heat you were in and stuff. I have a feeling that because of the size of the fields, they they wait until a couple of hours before when everyone's registered on the day, whether you're going to be there or not, and that's when the heats come out. I'm not 100% sure. So really, it'll just be about being flexible, playing it by ear, knowing that, you know, in this half an hour period on Saturday, I'm going to race and um, yeah just double checking what what is needed to qualify basically how many people are going to go through what the times might be and then you know doing everything i can to be in the top three and if i'm not in the top three be as fast as possible to try and get through on those fastest loser spots 
Um, it's exciting because the 1500 right now is absolutely stacked. Like everyone in the world would probably agree that Britain's probably the best country at 1500. You know, there's you could maybe say Kenya, USA, or you know whatever you want, but ultimately like we have more top guys in the in the top 20 in the world than anyone else. So to get out the heats is going to be really hard. But that's a what an amazing racing experience to go and face these guys, face other people like me at my level that are just as hungry to try and make a British final. Um, and then yeah, Sunday will either be a British final. What an experience that'll be again, go out and race hard, or it'll be a chance to watch some brilliant athletics, get a long run or workout in, and um, yeah, still make some content of the British final with Charlie, because he'll be there. So either way, you're the real winner. Um, yeah, British Champs next week. Obviously there's loads of different events. My primary one is the 1500. So we'll do a little flashback now to the last video we filmed before the recent Diamond League, where I gave my predictions of who was gonna uh, qualify for Britain in the top three spots. In particular order? Oh my God. I, I'm, I'm torn, you know, because I like going for Maverick and I don't like going for safe picks. Ready? Kerr. He just pulls it out of the bag. You can't, you can't doubt the guy. Gawley. Ooh. Hot and cold, but the guys run some insane times this year, and he's a great lad as well. So I reckon he'll get in. And then I'll I'll, I'll level with you right now. <sighs> oh, this is hard. This is hard. This is hard. Basically, my heart is saying Elliot Giles. My heart's saying that because I'm thinking like people thinking, oh, you know, he's just an 800 guy, and then they'll just come and smash these lads up, right? So my heart's saying that. My head's saying, well, George Mills has run 333 twice, looked pretty easy, run a good 5k. Why, why would you done, done nothing wrong to be out of my equation? Yeah? And then the Maverick side of me is going, why are we forgetting about little Matt Stonia? You know? Ooh. 332 on the big Ooh. stage. Why are we forgetting about him? So, um, yeah, what I've done there is when I had to pick three, I've given you all <laughs> five names of <laughs> possible people. So my final three are Gawley, Kerr, Stonia. Whatever your opinions are, go and look at who's running in the field, look at the rankings, whatever, and comment below which three people, in order, first, second, third, are going to be in the British Champs final. You have to do it by, uh, like, Saturday midday or something, so before the heats or anything like that, who are you going to be your top three people? First, second, third in the final. So British Champ, runner-up, and third spot, podium for the final in the 1500. Comment that below and put who's going to be first, second, third. For, to clarify, Whiteman's already going to Worlds, so don't put Jay Whiteman. So many people have done that. And... Um, yeah, all the people that get it right, I'll like bang you in a random name generator, pick one person, and maybe from Saw, we can send you something. In fact, yeah, yeah, I, I will send you something from Saw. That'll be the prize, so make sure you comment. Nice.